Welcome, Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. In this episode, part three of Roll of the Class. Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Role play. In this episode, part three of Roll of the Class. So where do we leave off? Okay, the last one we hit upon was Wizards. Yep. Now, the classes we, we hit upon are your core classes in most of the uh, yeah. tabletop RPGs. Your Barbarian, your Bard, your Cleric, your Druid, your Fighter, your Monk, your Paladin, your Ranger, your Sorcerer, your Rogue slash Thief, mm -hmm. and your Wizard. Yep. Now we're going to start breaking into some of the other ones, and we're not going to be typically alphabetical in these. So, one of my favorite, and I've played this character three times since the class has come out, and that is the witch. Yeah, witch. I love witches. You can do a lot with a witch. Witches are your supreme debuffer. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic at debuffing, and especially if you've got high... Uh, uh, saves, you know, the, their save ability uh -huh. for you know uh base when they're casting or hexing yep. hexing is the thing right you know and you know yeah. of course you get you get your hex at first and another one second then you can get another third or you can take feats of extra hex your witch can uh so like, let's take like the healing if yeah. your witch knows healing it can heal every person in the party one time every 24 hours now, at what level though can it do that it can start that so if you take a hex at first level uh -huh. of healing it can start doing 1d8 points of healing okay, okay. to every character, and all it has to do is come up and touch them. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that, you know, and that saves your cleric yeah. from always having to do Cure Light Wounds. And it's almost as good as a Cure Light Wound or even a channel. Yeah. Now, while it can only do it on a person once per day, that still helps a lot. It can help or, a lot. It can save. It can save right. the person's life in a combat. So, or yeah. if they use, if they have the slumber ability. <clears throat> slumber, that's a good one too. Oh, that's a fantastic yeah. one because we all know that like wizards and sorcerers with their sleep spell, mm -hmm. which is only effective up to one d four hit hit die a monster. Yeah. The slumber doesn't work that way. The slumber will hit any, and a slumber will even work on an elf. Yeah. So, you cast slumber. Give him. Give him that. I, you know, at, at a person who's 30 mm -hmm. feet away from you, and they, they fail their slight saving throw, and boom, they're down. Now, it doesn't last very long, but still, it gives party enough time to either go up and coup de grace or... Run away. Or run away. Yeah. Uh, the thing about witches that I always think about are hexes. You know, yeah. do bis behexed, and that kind of thing. And, you know, you can hex them for misfortune, and you can do stuff right. like that, and make sure you make them drop their weapons, or make them have to re-roll, or make right. them make them get bad luck, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, you know, if you, if you misfortune them, you know, they have to roll more dice to hit, and they have yep. to take the worst one. Or you can take favor on, on a party member, and they roll two dice, and they take the higher one. That's cool. That's, that's a, it's right. a different form of buffing. It's not like you're actually making them stronger. You're just giving them better fortune, so that they may right. want they can re-roll and get a better roll. Maybe get a better roll, but anything like that, you know. Yeah, they their spells are arcane and divine based. They don't yeah. have they have a little bit of both, and then they have some of their own which which ones like post uh, post uh, pustulus, which causes somebody to break out in boils and itch, and, and they have to stop and scratch, so it's, they're great at debuffing. Yeah. And, you know, they, they can cast invisibility, they can fly. Well, they start off at first level, if you take the, the hex and uh, fly, they start off that they can uh, feather fall. Okay. So if they fall from a great distance, they feather fall. And then they go to levitate, so they can they can go up and up and down, but they can't fly around and then once they get to fifth level with fly they can start flying around so they can be effective that way but a witch should never be a frontline fighter they, they should they should focus first on buffing the party and debuffing the party but they're fun man i love playing a witch now what's the one what's the spell that makes people start dancing and they can't stop oh geez well there's 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 the laughter one, which is good. They start laughing and they can't stop. Right. 
But there's like there's one that where they start you can make them start dancing. Yeah, I can't think of that. Yeah, that's a really cool one because I remember I think I think we had that happen one time in a in a, a fight where you were in a fight and you made one of the baddies start dancing and they mm -hmm. had to just stand there and dance in place. You know, they couldn't fight, they were just dancing. And everybody was like, well, just ignore that guy. Let him just dance. And we'll just ignore him. He was just dancing. And we completely ignored him. You know? And, yeah. I mean, they could do a lot and, of stuff like that. And while they're hexes, you can only affect one creature or one player at, at a single time with a hex. That's still, you know, you oh, got yeah. this monster. I'm I'm hexing yep. I'm hexing their spellcaster uh -huh. to make him fall asleep. Yep. And he's within range and he falls asleep. And yep. now I can go to this guy and go to this guy and go to this guy. So you can really start picking picking the party apart. So let me ask you this: Now, do witches have any kind of counterspell activities? Like, can <clears> they can they counter spells, or can they block spells? They have some some abilities with that. Okay, because that's kind of an important thing where someone casts, or they're getting ready to cast like a really powerful spell on your party. And I seem to remember that witches have some kind of counterspell abilities where they can block spells from taking place. Well, one of the witches I had to dispel magic. Okay, well, that's so one thing. That's yeah. one thing. Yeah. So they can just spell magic. Right. Yeah. Now, one thing I would suggest is if you're playing a witch and you have invisibility is buff buff your party up with that. Yeah. Don't worry about doing it on yourself. Yeah. Doing it on your party yeah. because they're going to be all the ones that can do more damage. Visibility on your fighter, visibility on your rogue. Your rogue sneaks up. Yeah. You know, he's got a plus 20. On visibility on your cleric so they can heal without getting smashed. Yeah. You're, you're, you put invisibility on your cleric. Your cleric's yeah. standing up there and, and now... They're within range, and they can touch mm -hmm. touch who's ever and and bring them back up and get them yeah. get them up to fighting status without being squished themselves. So the thing about witches is, you know, witches socially on on in this country and a lot of other countries they have a bad reputation as right. being evil people. They use these spells, they hex people, they cause bad things, and we all know about the witch hunts where thousands and thousands of people were killed, you know, by inquisitors. Uh, as in, in they were accused of being witches, and sometimes they would, you know, they would uh, find a woman who had become powerful in society, either through her own abilities or uh, other abilities or other circumstances. And because people were jealous of her, you well, know, they thought she was a witch, and then they <clears throat> would accuse her of being a witch, and they'd go through a trial, and then she'd be put to death. Well, we st we still use that term today that we don't like somebody else. She's a real witch. She's a real witch. Yeah, you know, and it's. It's a social negative on, on women, Yeah, unfortunately. Unless, of course, you're Stevie Nicks, and then you're the white witch. <laughs> and, then and then you're, you're a good witch. And then you're a good witch. Or well, Glenda. Glenda the good witch, from yeah, Wizard from the Wizard of Oz. Oz see? Of course, you had the bad witch, the wicked witch of yeah. the West. But. That's, that's, the wicked <laughs> witch of the West has done more, more negative. Yeah, negative for <laughs> witches than just about anything I've ever seen in my life. You know, green skin, warty nose, <laughs> yeah, you know, that kind the of thing. The stereotypical witch. Yeah. So the witch, the witches are magic users, but they're also really potent characters to play because they have a lot of magical abilities. Right. And do they get a lot of high int? Do they? Do they well, have a lot of knowledge? That is. Oh yeah. Uh, int is probably the number one uh, ability that you you put in okay. for a witch because okay. that's where they get their, their their stuff from. Charisma would be second. Okay. Because then they can start influencing. They're not. They're not great at, at seeing things, but they can have a lot of knowledge and and uh, persuasion and and using their spell abilities to to get things that they need or want. So, folks, I love witches. If you're gonna play a witch, please, please, please don't make your witch a frontline fighter. Okay. No. Please think of your witch as being someone who can enhance other people's abilities. Yeah, and, or, or debuffing and the enemy. debuff the enemy. All right, they they affect the outcomes and manipulate. That's but they do it from the back. They do it from the shadows. They don't grab an axe and come charging up to take on the fighter like a frontline fighter. That doesn't. That's not a witch. Or it doesn't them make any sense. Like a wizard, because they're yeah. while they can have wizardy type spells. They're just not quite as effective yeah. in that sense when it comes to fireball, lightning bolt, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, they can do it, but they're not as, as quite as effective as a wizard. They have other things that they can do later on. Uh, in fact, I think my witch <clears throat> had the uh, the black tentacle spell. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah. that was yeah, she yeah. was the first witch I ever played. Yeah, see, that's, see, that's what I mean about how they can affect outcomes of what's going on in the game by 
doing, you know, affecting circumstances. Yeah. Uh, of, you know, black tentacles uh, causing misfortune. You know, that sort of thing where you can affect the outcomes of yep. other people's actions. Charming. Charm, Charm people. Uh, take the hex prehensile hair, and that way you don't have to be 30 feet. You can use your hair to, to go in to, exactly. to touch. Yeah, that kind or of even use your familiar. But be wary, using familiar to get into the combat, that could get your familiar killed, and then you're going to be in trouble because now you're going to have time to yeah. to try and get a new familiar. Think of your think of your party. Okay, think of your party as as like a, a few like magic users, fighters, a mixture of the two, and just think of the witch mm -hmm. as being someone who kind of stands in the back, has a lot of knowledge, uh, affects the outcomes of various actions and things like that. It's someone that you want to have in your group when you really don't have a wizard, so you right. can have a witch. <laughs> no, actually, I believe in old times a male witch was actually called a wizard. People say it's a warlock, but a warlock was actually more. Uh, elemental base, but you know we get the warlock. I think a lot from bewitched. Yeah, I think so too. The like male witch is being called yeah. a warlock. Yeah, the thing about warlocks is I think another name for a warlock is a hedge witch or a hedge wizard. Yes. And those were the male versions. Uh, they were a very powerful nature-based sort of like the druid. Yeah, sort of like a nature-based uh, a druid sort of holy person. Yeah. Uh, who you know definitely pagan. Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely elemental, that sort of thing. So you, you know, there's a difference there, a big difference. So, but witches can be really, really fun. And of course, witches, you know, they make the best characters that you could paint up because they're so cool. They have <laughs> flowing robes and beautiful hats, and they have ravens and they cats have ravens and cats. And and they look really, and they look really, really, really neat. You, you know? give them the wizardy hat, you know, of yeah. course, like the Harry Potter stuff. Yeah, and, uh, they just look really cool, and they're and they're really really fun to play they're fun uh, to have in a group and they're fun to role play yeah, which is one of those characters that I, I love playing like I said I played three since the witch character came out in Pathfinder the first one was uh, she was she was she I actually played her kind of like a true witch she was afraid of fire and water I remember that yeah yeah because she was afraid of getting burned to death burned at the stake and she was afraid of being drowned that was yes yeah, okay so remember that she wouldn't cross a bridge yes so the monk Somebody, knocked her out. Yeah, the, the monk, monk knocked her out. The monk knocked her out, and then when she came to, she hexed him terribly. Yes, and he hated that. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, did he hate it? Now, later on, she had to get in a boat, I think, or something, and wouldn't do it. And no, it wasn't a boat. We never had to get in. Oh no, there was a boat, but yeah. she didn't do it. Well, she no. flew. Okay, but there was another time where she had to go through some water, and my barbarian character Clem. No, that was that was the bridge. That was the bridge. Clem he, carried her. He picked her up and carried her. That because, was when she was knocked out. Yeah, and she she was angry at him, but because he was a barbarian, he could take the he could take the damage, and also mm -hmm. he looked up to her. He sort of worshipped her as kind of like a minor deity. So when she mm -hmm. did punish him, he just shrugged it off. Yeah. But he also Clem also respected her greatly because yeah. she was a witch. The monk, on the other hand, didn't get along, <laughs> and I remember you misfortuned that monk oh, yes. or something. Oh yes, every oh, time I could, I misfortuned that him. character. Hated, hated that because you know he always he always metamaxed his his monk playing, and every time you misfortune, he would blow his rolls, and <laughs> man, was he mad! But it was really cool. Uh, was it was fun. really cool role play, folks. Really fun. Yeah, yeah. And in the in the same sex couple with the paladin, mm -hmm. the character was a witch. I remember that. So it was yeah. a paladin and a witch. So you yeah. got these two diametrically opposed characters. And we couldn't really figure out what was going on between the two. Yeah, they were always together. They were always kind of doing stuff, but yet they fought a lot because no, they never fought. They just well, the paladin was always trying to protect her. And, but and there was a weird there was a weird thing that the two did because they were so morally different. One was a witch. One was a paladin. And, and maybe they didn't fight, but they had something that was always like, there was always like a tension between the two yeah. of them, because they weren't on the same kind of moral level, you know? It was kind of like a weird sitcom, you know, where you had like somebody who was just completely different and living in a little apartment, and they were always at each other's kind of throats or something. If you ever play two characters, make sure that they're totally different, because, yeah. because that makes it easy yeah. for the party yeah. to recognize who is what. Yeah. And it makes it easier for you to, to dissimilate between the two. That's what makes role playing so fun. Right. Is you can do all sorts of stuff like that, you know, and you can have these different characters that are really opposed to each other, but they may be working towards the same purpose. So yeah, yeah it was really cool. I found that in second edition of Pathfinder, they've kind of debuffed the wish, which like the slum, excuse me, slumber and, and a few other things. But yeah. I still love a witch. 
Well, I mean, you don't have to play it that way. You can play the witch any way you want to. That's the great thing about Pathfinder is the variabilities that you can have in your characters yeah, are just absolutely. totally unique. Next character we're going to talk about is an alchemist. Now, I've played one yeah. alchemist, and we've had one person yeah. play an alchemist yeah. in our games. And the alchemist I played was actually a goblin. He was kind of fun. Whizbang. That was. What was. Whizbang Boom was that. Wait, his name. wait. Was, was Whizbang an actual goblin or He was a goblin. No, he was a goblin. But did he disguise himself? Nope. nope. He there was, was a something goblin. different about Whizbang. Nope. <laughs> he was a goblin through and through. And he loved to throw bombs. Okay, he but threw bombs. but in that in that game, it was okay to be a goblin, right, or something? Well, goblin and Pathfinder was was a playable race. I know, I know, I know. But in that in that campaign, because normally people kill goblins because they're considered to be evil vermin. Yeah. But Whizbang was different, and, and he could exist. He was kind of an outcast from his from his his society, but. He was he yeah. was fun, man. Yeah. Always throwing bombs. Yeah, and, that was a fun character. And, and what's funny was after I played him, the guy that I always liked to play the monk saw how how damaging the alchemist could be, and of course decided in his next game to play an alchemist yeah. and then maxed him, and he was playing him kind of like a Doctor Jekyll and Mister yeah, Hyde type it, alchemist. It because just alchemists yeah. can do that, they and can, then he just freaking abused that whole class again and made him this max bomb thrower that did all this splash explosion damage and it was just like okay whatever take over the game again whatever then maxing yeah can ruin the game. so uh, i liked i liked your your character where you played the goblin that was fun yeah. that was fun and funny yeah, was it? yeah it was fun <laughs> and, and, and funny too because it was just fun and funny yeah you know that's kind of circumstances you can get from playing these unusual characters are really cool now, you know, alchemists, they gather up materials, they have their little alchemist set, and they have their little laboratory, and they start, you know, doing stuff, and and that's pretty cool, you yeah. know, you get your laboratory. There was somebody else that had a, played an alchemist in a game, and I can't remember what game it was, but yeah, um, that was kind of fun, too. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, they can be really cool, because they can create, they can create potions, they can mm -hmm. create alchemical mixtures. Healing. Healing. Yeah. They can create, and they can make bombs, they can make poisons, and they can do all sorts of stuff like that. And and uh, they're really big on making stuff. Not so much frontline fighting. Of course, they can throw their bombs, which are like little glass globes with stuff in them, and they can throw their bombs, and when it hits, it makes gas or smoke. Explosions or and splash Explosions damage or and splash damage from acid. That kind of stuff. So you don't really want them as a frontline fighter, but they can really affect the outcome of a game. That's what's really kind of cool about them. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we did have another alchemist one time in one of our campaigns. Um, gosh, I can't think of what they did. I know they threw bombs. but Yeah, we had another bomb thrower. Yeah, yeah but I can't remember who, who it was. But it was really, they were fun. I mean, they were fun oh, playing. Um uh, it was the same guy that defended uh, the uh, the flesh column. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay yeah, it was Sterling. Yeah. Yeah, and he played he played an alchemist at one time. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was it was fine. It was pretty good. He played the alchemist pretty well. Yeah. You know, didn't over didn't overdo it. Didn't abuse the class. Um. And of course, if you've ever read any, read any of the Pathfinder books, uh, I've got a bunch of them sitting here behind us. There's actually uh, an alchemist in one of those in a couple of those books, and he's he's kind of he's kind of fun. He's always screwing along and trying to to gather up his stuff and trying to stay alive. And well, when you want to talk about evil alchemists, I mean, not not so much in the Pathfinder world, but in the Warhammer old world stuff. There's mm. the Skaven, and right, they're Skaven. The, they're the supreme alchemists. They make chemicals and stuff like that, and. And you know they're evil, and they do all kinds of chemical poisons and stuff like that. So that's that. You know, you could play an alchemist as being bad, you know, as being a poisoner and that kind right. of thing, or make drugs and th and things like that. But to me, an alchemist is something that I don't really think that there's been a lot of characters associated with that. No, that we have that we've had we in have. games or that we have in like movies or. You know, like contemporary. Well, of course, uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. You might consider that as a yeah, as an, an alchemist. alchemist because that's yeah. that's one of the abilities of the alchemist is is taking a potion that mutagens mutagens. Yeah, that would change you. You you would ch yep. you know temporarily change you into something and then you would change back. Yep. 
I got to say, I don't think we ever really had that many of uh, that kind of a mutagen. Yeah, the one guy that was min-maxing. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm trying to forget a lot of that because it's just so <laughs> it's just terrible playing with that guy. You always want to remember the good stories. And, you yeah, know, you want to remember was, the good stories, yeah. not so much the bad stuff. Cavalier. I've played one Cavalier, and, and you know, Cavalier was one of those characters that came along in first edition in Unearthed Arcana. It was the Barbarian and the Cavalier were, were expansion classes. And the Cavalier is is kind of like your paladin without being your knight in shining armor. Yeah. They're kind of yeah. your, for, your your knight who uh, who leads the, the forces and, and boosts the morale of the party. And uh, they have teamwork feats that they can pass yeah. on. Yeah. Without having everybody else having to have teamwork. Well, the word cavalier comes from the French chevalier, yeah, which chevalier. means knight. Which means knight. Right. So they are a kind of a knight. Everybody, we you know, the most popular reference that you can think of to a cavalier would be the three musketeers. They were like yeah. knights with muskets, but right. they were, you know, they were they were cavaliers. And of course, everybody says, you know, you get that cavalier, that devil may care cavalier attitude. It's like, why are you so cavalier about it? And it's like yeah, the dashing cavalier. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I've never played a cavalier. Uh, I think I looked into it one time, and it really didn't work very well unless you had followers. But when you, you had start, followers, you they worked really followers well. Followers later on. Yeah, yeah, but when it, when you did get followers, it worked really, really well. But you had to be. In order, you're just essentially a fighter until you get followers, and then you're like a leader, and that's when right. it really starts coming into its own. And like your paladin, you usually have a mount, a horse, or yeah. or something that's yeah. that's uh, powerful and that can fight, and and you can fight combat from. So they're definitely your your jousting type knight from from, yeah. from literature and history. And there's something else that cavaliers can do. They can use certain kind of weapons, and their crit range is really high. They can be. Uh, there's something like they can use like rapiers or something like that, and they have a they have That's a swashbuckler. Is that a swashbuckler? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm getting that kind of fused with a cavalier. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> is your swash, swashbuckler could kind of kind of pass off as a cavalier? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, once those, again, the three musketeers could actually sure. consider swashbuckler. Do they do they blend? I mean, what is the real thing between a cavalier and a swashbuckler then? Well, the cavalier is more of your knight in shining armor. Mm. Okay. It's kind of the the paladin without being the lawful good. You can have a chaotic okay. good or neutral good or or neutral or or chaotic. So Man, they're not as popular. Classes. You know, a lot of people would rather play a paladin than a cavalier. But uh, the one cavalier I got to play was was quite fun mm -hmm. because I played her as you know they're a leader is what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be they a leader. are a They'd leader. Be commander, yeah. Commanders, generals, captains, yeah. lieutenants. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I I guess in a way it'd be fun to play. If you were playing within a great scenario, like a sort of renaissance -y kind of scenario, or even like a high middle age scenario mm -hmm. where you could utilize a lot of the things, you know, horses, yeah. jousting, that kind of... I, and I've always wanted to play in a game that was kind of like that. Oh, it'd be great to have a you game know? where you actually have, have your jousting tournaments. And when you have horses and cavalry and... And you get to play like cavaliers and swashbucklers, you know, where it is something kind of like Elizabethan England, or you know, or mm. you know that kind of like uh, high Renaissance uh, stuff, you know, a kind of a setting where you have, you know, a lot of different things taking place, you know, where it isn't just like a kind of a Middle Age type of Dark Age fantasy, where it's more of a more of a Renaissance type of thing, you know, where you have theater and music mm -hmm. and magic and stuff like that and i just think that would be really super cool yeah, to play it'd be kind of fun yeah so we're gonna kind of end with a cavalier on that one because there's not a whole lot you know I've, i'm the only one that's ever ha played one yeah tom's ever played one so there's not a lot of experience and not many people have ever played cavaliers in our yeah. games yeah so kind of think of them as your knight in shining armor without being so holy and good and yeah of course they don't get the spells that a paladin has they're more of a of a marshal do they have any spells no they're more of a marshal okay based okay so we're gonna go on to since we kind of hit upon the swashbuckler let's jump to the swashbuckler well, why don't we wait why don't we do that next time you want to do that later on yeah okay we'll, yeah. we'll we'll not do that okay okay gunslinger i have no idea what that is <laughs> so gunslinger is your your gun toting 
Uh, in fact, in Vox Ma- uh, Machina... Oh, that guy. ...is the guy with the pepper box. Oh, okay, yeah, I think okay. he's a gunslinger in... He's an uh, alchemist, too, in a little way, I think. I think he might be, but yeah, he's yeah. a gunslinger. Okay. Now, gunslingers are typically your guys that carry your flintlocks and your mm-hmm. your matchlocks and... The black the powder bravado. Black powder bravado. I'm not bravado. really sure what that yeah. is. So they're great at distance fighting. Um, there, I think there, we did have somebody in a group that played... Yeah, there was somebody. A gunslinger? Played, played a gunslinger. I think it was it was Sterling again that played a gunslinger. Gosh, it's But so we didn't get a plate in very long. But so you're reloading, it takes a long reload. Oh, it's like that's having right. a heavy crossbow. That's right. Where yeah, you took, shoot, yeah. reload, it took skip a round. around. It took and a round shoot to reload. Again. Yeah. yeah. Um I gotta confess, I mean so there's different ways to play gunslinging kind of stuff. Now in Pathfinder, because you know, it's so it's so variable and it's so expansive. You can actually play an old west scenario and use you a could. D, and use or a pirates D, or pirates, and you can do a D twenty version of that in um, or even in Pathfinder. Yeah, you can do that because it's because it is it has such a great variety of different if different areas you can explore. So you could have a gunslinger that's in the old west. You could have like pirate. You could have like three musketeers. You could do like you know like revolutionary war. All sorts yep. of stuff like that, and make a gunslinger for that. And so, I guess I've never really explored so much. I think one time I did use our software to create a gunslinger. But you never played them. Yeah. I never played it, uh, but I did use it to create it, and it turned out to be that you can actually create like a gunfighter. Yeah, you know yeah. everything's there. Uh, all the all the characteristics, all the feats, everything. It's all there, and it's really kind of weird, but you can do that. Um, maybe someday we can do like a uh, like a piratey well, or a I three musketeers on, kind of thing. Planned on a pirate three musketeers oh, type of adventure. Yeah. yeah, we just never did get to crossbones. Was I think was crossbones? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would Can't be really cool. Um, Another world that was fully created with deities and yeah. history and back history and races and it's just really hard to mix gunslinging and magic, I think. Because what do you do? I mean, gunslinging of course is purely mechanical, purely chemical, purely within the physics of this realm. Right. You know? Firing pin hits the back of a bullet or or, or, or a, a cap or, or, or a cap or, or, or it or comes flint. to or strikes a flint. Or you got the match. You know, yeah. and then what do you do with a bullet and you're a wizard? You know, deflect shields i mean it's just kind of a weird situation to throw a magic user into something like that i guess you could make like a mesmerist would work great in something like that but an actual full-blown gandalf type arcanist would be just really odd it's it's a kind of a weird mix and yeah. i know that pathfinder has been glory and, and in some of the adventures it's one of the the added on classes from yeah. one of the books but it's not a class that we've ever really uh, Experimented with and, and played. It's relatively new. And yeah. Ha, you know, not getting. I not getting to ever play that much. I I'm almost always a forever DM. Yeah. I uh, haven't really ever really looked at playing a gunslinger. I guess I'd I like. Think I would I would consider it depending yeah. on the game. Yeah. I and guess the background of the game. I guess I'd like to say that in the future I would hope that we would all get a chance to play like an unusual character like that. Yeah. You know, and have fun and really explore the boundaries of where you could take that character and what they could do. That, to me, seems... That's why Pathfinder is so good, because it has all these opportunities where you can mm-hmm. actually explore those areas. And, and I would like to, to, to try that, you know, to be able to yeah. do that sometime. You know, I think, you know, if it's, if it's a gunslinger in a low magic world, gosh, explore, explore it. it. It could really work out. Yeah. All right. So, I think we're going to wrap up this... Episode. episode of Roll of the Class in Wizards yep. of the Tower. Yep. May all your adventures be epic. And keep on rolling. Thanks, folks. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, folks.